Okay, so for today's presentation, we're going to do an introduction to the Fediverse. Um, this title page has a little content on it. Oh, the second, I think I'm on the wrong screen with my keys. There we go. Okay, so a little introduction. Uh, I'm Bob Murphy. Uh, I've been to a few Keylog meetings before, um, but I'm a systems administrator in New Jersey. I'm a long time uh, desktop Linux user. And I have a, a long time Fediverse denizen, like pretty much from the beginning. Um, you can reach me on the Fediverse and other things, uh, particularly at Murph at bostodon.org. Uh, that's, that's my main Fediverse uh, identity. Uh, I'm also still on the long neglected Identica as slash Murph, and we're going to get into that in a couple minutes. So, what the Fediverse is the Fediverse is a collection of protocols servers, and of course, the users that use the systems. You know what, I'm, I keep looking over here. I should be looking over here. Um, the users can exchange short messages, blog type posts, music and videos, and actually, that's where it is today. There is actually quite a bit more coming in, in the works. And, uh, okay, I did this a little bit out of order. So together, the protocol servers and users form a network that communicate together. And sometimes those, you know, servers, there are bots in the network, there are real people. You know, it's, it's an interesting conglomeration of a lot of different things. And uh, like I say, right now, they're sort of more on the mimicking other Internet sites, you know, but doing it in an independent way. But there's more coming. So let me give a little history of the Fediverse. Uh, in 2008, a guy called Evan Petromo looked at Twitter and said, I can create a service like that in an afternoon. And he did, pretty much. He worked up a, a basic site called Identica and iterated it over time. And what, but what he did, what he did with it was different than something like Twitter, was he created a protocol around it called OStatus. And OStatus allowed different servers, so you could have a server running O status running a, a, a an Identica site, you know, identi an Identica like site, and but it could communicate to other servers. Where Twitter, you're only within Twitter. This, it was more like a combination of Twitter, you know, you had a Twitter like short message broadcast type of service, but it worked kind of like email insofar as different servers could be running with their own ideas of how things should look and how things should work. But they could all communicate with each other. So if you're, if I'm on Identica and someone else is on, you know, uh, you know, nybill.com, we could communicate with each other without having to sign up for each other's services. So we didn't all have to be on the same instance. That's what they call the different versions of, you know, the different servers. So in about 2012, he was, you know, looking at the protocol as he was working on things. He was working on the site. He was working on the protocols. He created a new protocol called Punk.io, and it was better in a lot of ways. You know, the first one was sort of a first revision. He created a brand new protocol, Punk.io, and he released the old status net protocol. He, re he released O status to the FSF, where it got renamed as GNU Social, and it still continues to this day. Um, but the so the the sites that were still running on GNU Social continued running, you know, that we're running on O status, you know, the, the name changed, but it still did all the same things. Um, but one thing that kind of hurt the whole thing was Identica was sort of the flagship site of that. When he converted the flagship flagship site to Pump.io, one of the unfortunate things was Pump.io was a lot better in a lot of ways, but it was not interoperable with Google Social or with O status. Sorry, I'm getting all my, my protocols mixed up here. Um, so Pump.io did not interoperate with OStatus. So once he moved Identica to Pump.io, that connection was lost. And anybody that converted to Pump.io spoke on the Pump.io network, and everybody that was on GNU Social stayed on the GNU Social network. And I don't have any statistics on it, but it hurt both of them, essentially. Uh, there was less activity on both. I know I was on Identica. I was on the flagship instance. And now you couldn't talk to people outside of that. And honestly, his software on the Identica site made discoverability even within the site a little bit tough. So the community, there was a really nice community on Identica. It was a lot of technical people, a lot of free software people. It was really interesting. There were a lot of good conversations. It was really fun to follow. 
But after the conversion, it got considerably less so, unfortunately. Um, and the other unfortunate thing was his timing. Because this happened, so we sort of created an earthquake in the, the, the you know, very early Fediverse years. Um, we created this protocol issue. And on top of that, that was right when Google Plus came out. So there was a lot of um, information in the tech press and in the you know, technical communities that, oh, here's this new thing from Google, when well, they weren't quite as evil as they are now, um, where it was uh, a nice, interesting thing, and you could organize your users nicely, and it gave you, obviously, the reach and the, you know, the, the, the availability of Google. Um, of course, you lose out on the federation, which was unfortunate. So, so this was sort of a, you know, a, a lot of things working against, you know, Identica in particular in the early Fediverse. Well, so things sort of burbled along with this for several years. The GNU social sites were still there and were still working. Uh, Identica was still there and still working. Um, but there wasn't a whole lot going on with it. It wasn't growing enormously, but there, there was a core base of users that were still using it. So around March of 2016, another person, Yugen Rochko, whose online handle is Gargron, if I'm pronouncing that right, which I'm probably not, uh, created what's called Mastodon which used the new social as a back end. So what he wanted to do is he wanted to create sort of a new social network. But of course, a, a brand new social network from scratch is tough because there are no users. The new, the new social network, which was still out there and had a lot of users, um, gave him something to start with. So he created his site Mastodon, created the, the Mastodon software and released it as open source software. Um, but he also ran a site called Mastodon not social. Now all of a sudden I'm drawing blank. Well, I'll look into that later. Um, and his software had a very tweet deck like interface. I don't know if anybody here, we pull the, the view back up. Anybody out here use Twitter with tweet deck? No? Okay. Me either. So I am going on other people's um, word on this. They say the interface was very much like tweet deck. And uh, I'm going to show you that interface in a few minutes. So, and, uh, oh, well, nobody has any experience. So I'll just say, hey, it's like food deck, and everybody has to leave it. That's cool. um, so, and it's easy to use and gives you a nice view of what's going on, and it gained some popularity. And this went along for a couple of years. Um, in 2018, uh, there was some new activity in the Fediverse. So, Remember, GNU Social, you know, Evan Promo sort of cast aside, not entirely cast aside, but set free because of, there were flaws in it. And I don't have an idea of what all the flaws are. I could guess, but pardon. that's not, not, it's not useful for me to guess to what those flaws were. Um, but what happened was in 2018, there was some, uh, some activity to create a new protocol called Activity Pub. Um, and uh, this was developed over the years, but it was accepted as a standardized protocol by the W3C. That I forgot to put in my slides. I meant to correct that. So the W3C has actually accepted this as one of the protocols for the internet for interchange of short messages. Um, most of the Fediverse platforms have adopted it by now. Um, so it was authored partially by Evan Pedromo. We get an echo now, Mark? No. no I, have a, I have a question. Oh, okay. uh, it was authored by Evan Pedromo. Christopher Leverwemmer and a couple of other people. I didn't get everybody that was on there, but those are two of the main main operatives in that. And it expanded upon what had come before it, both in Pub.io and StatusNet, um, and made it into a better protocol. And over time, um, Mastodon adopted it. Um, most of the other stuff does. I think even the new social now supports it as a protocol. Um, are you taking questions through so the uh, presentation, Bob? i over a lot of the... Uh, Fediverse, and this is what all of these new services have been built on. So, let's get into some of those. I know that was a lot of text and a lot of talking for one slide. So, so the Federation. So most services, when you look at a Twitter or a Facebook or even Google Plus before Google killed it, as Google does, um, a single organization runs it. So that single place is where your data goes. The only way to share it with somebody else is to have them join that service, unless they allow you to share it publicly, which sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. And again, that's up to them, what they allow you to do with it. And you are subject to whatever rules they put into place. You are strictly bound by what they want to do, or not do for that matter. 
Um, a federation allows users of different instances, different people on different servers to interoperate with each other. So without creating an account for each shared resource. So if I'm on Fostodon and you're on Mastodon.social, I can subscribe to your messages and I can follow your stuff without creating an account on your system. So you don't have to have an account on everything you want to work on. And if this sounds familiar, this of course is how email works. Uh, with email, you can be on Gmail and I can be on Fastmail and we can email each other without having to have accounts on each other's respective servers, which is the way you want things to work. So we've taken, you know, they've taken that idea and moved it to a new, new type of system. And different systems, these different servers, can be run in different ways. So there are ways that you can block certain instances. If somebody's doing something abusive or they have, you know, porn or whatever, whatever the system administrator decides is undesirable to have on the server, they can block other services. One of the big things that Yugen uh, had, you know, he said it's like Twitter without the Nazis. That's the, that was sort of one of his new things, and uh, that was one of his uh, founding ideas with Mastodon, uh, was he wanted to get away from some of the abuse of Twitter, and different services can run their, ser their servers the way they like it. What you need to do is, I mean, if you want to join the Fediverse, um, you find an instance that blocks and doesn't block according to what you want to see or don't want to see, and it gives you more control over what you want to do. And uh, something I want to something I want to bring up. Let me, let me get a second here. Uh, something I want to bring up. By the way, I'm not pushing hard for everyone to jump on the Fediverse today. That's not really my point. Sorry, I'm looking I'm looking over here because that's where everybody is because I'm looking for reactions, but I realize the camera's on the one that I'm presenting on. Um, so, just because of my talk, if you find it interesting and you want to go sign up for the Fediverse, go ahead. I totally encourage it. But don't feel like, I'm, hey, Murph said I should go sign up for this site. If a Twitter-like experience or the other services that are here, if this doesn't appeal to you, don't sign up just because of that. But if it does, you know, like if you say, you know, I like Twitter, but there's too much noise and there's nothing I can do about it, a federated service is probably the solution to your problem. Bob, are you taking questions as we go? What's that? Are you taking questions as we go? Someone had a question a little bit earlier. Oh, you know, I didn't mention that, but I highly welcome it. This Are one. Any of these protocols IETF standards? Um, I don't know if Activity Pub has been accepted as an IETF standard. Like I say, it's a W3C standard, and I don't know how cross, you know, cross compatible those standards are. I would have to look into that to answer it. I'm not sure, to be honest. Does my non-answer at least non-answer the question? Yeah, is there any bridges to like Twitter and Parler or any of these other services? That are there are, there are. Uh, there are bridges to Twitter. Um, generally, etiquette, etiquette wise, uh, you don't want to bridge all of your Twitter uh, traffic directly to the Fediverse because that's generally kind of impolite. Because like you're talking to other people. That's like if I was just over here talking to somebody else while everybody else is talking, and you can't, you also can't participate in that conversation. So there is, there are some things to bridge the two of them across. Most people say try to be judicious in how much stuff you bridge across between them. Of course, people could unfollow you if they really don't like what you're going across on Twitter. And I've done that with people. I've been like, you know, follow somebody that said some interesting stuff, but then for everything interesting, I get 10 Twitter posts that talk to people on Twitter and not people that are here. And I'm like, yeah, that's not an interesting to follow. So, so. The answer is yes, there are bridges for all of these things. Um, you know, uh, I don't know if there's directly one for Parler. But do, do, do we know what what uh, protocol Parler is on? Because I know Gab jumped. So so just to give you a little little history of you know some of what's happened with the Fediverse lately is Gab jumped on. Um, they claim to be the biggest instance, uh, although that's largely disputed. Um, but they didn't, you know, they, their moderation policies are sort of orthogonal to what a lot of other people do. So most of the Fediverse blocked them. 
So then they kind of took their ball and went home and defederated from the rest of the Fediverse. So I don't know if there are bridges to and from Gab, because I think most of the operatives that would be interested in that got fed up with the respective other side, the Mastodon people didn't want to bridge to Gab, and the Gab people didn't want to bridge to Gab. So that didn't happen. So I don't know what protocol Parler is on and whether it's whether it would be easy or hard to bridge it to the rest of the Fediverse. So, another non-answer. Sorry. I don't claim to have all the answers. I have some of them, but not all of them. So, let me continue with the slides. Let's talk a little bit about federation. So, so this is just an illustration of a centralized feder federated and sort of the way the Fediverse works, too. So, in a centralized system, everybody talks to one server. And if that one server decides that you're out, you're out. If they decide that uh, you can't put the object, you're, you're done with that. And if anybody else wants to follow you, they have to be on that server. There's no other way to get there. In a federated system, we've got several different servers, and people can talk through those servers to each other, sort of like an email type of setup. The Fediverse is just a little bit more complicated than that. All the connections ultimately go through the servers, but I wanted to represent these two as, say, this server blocked this server over here. Okay, you guys can see my pointer, right, when I'm pointing at things? Yes. At least I'm not pointing at the screen. That's even less useful. So, uh, so say this server has blocked this server over here. So even if there's a block there, and generally a lot of the, a lot of the messages don't go through, if you subscribe directly to another person, you can still get their messages. So I'm going to go through the different timelines, the home timeline, the local timeline, and the federated timeline. So that'll determine where some of these things show up. But just because there is some moderation going on doesn't necessarily preclude you following people on another instance, which is a nice feature of this. So, so with the Fediverse, generally the servers talk to each other. But you can have some degree of routing around some of the local moderation, which is which is nice. And I've seen I've seen other illustrations like this, and I haven't seen uh, everyone uh, anyone sort of encapsulate that. But there is something of a something of a route around some of those rules. So here are some of the services that are available, and this is only some of them. And this is gonna you know there, there's a lot to it here. So, the stuff I've been talking about so far has been mainly the Twitter-like uh, Twitter -like, uh, services uh, for microblogging. And Mastodon is the one that we're going to see the most of, and it has taken a lot of the, uh, a lot of the headspace, a lot of the uh, momentum of the Fediverse. It's sort of what has carried the Fediverse forward. Uh, Pleroma is a much lighter weight it's a smaller, you know, it's a more compact thing. It's supposed to have better moderation features and some other features. I'm not actually on any Pleroma instances, but it has some advantages and some disadvantages, but it's an interesting alternative. If you were going to run a single user instance, Pleroma might be something to look at because it will take a lot less resources for a smaller instance. And MISKey, which is another one in the same vein, but honestly, I really don't know much about it. If you were looking into running your own, you may look into that as well. Unfortunately, I can't give you a whole lot about that one. Um, so those are all Twitter-like. You know, they're short messages, uh, you know, with following a similar structure. And I'm going to show that in a few minutes. PixelFed is an image hosting version of this. So it's sort of like if you can imagine, like, Instagram. So you've got an Instagram-like interface, and you've got that type of service. But here's, here's where the federation part gets really interesting. If you know that I have a pixel, so say you, you see my Mastodon account, and you see some pictures, and you say, wow, I'd really like to follow the pictures. If my pictures are coming from a PixelFed account, you can follow the PixelFed account, and you can respond from your Mastodon account to my images. You can comment on them from Mastodon. So these, these different, these different uh, services can interoperate with each other. So PixelFed, I'm going to show you that one as well. So there are other services, too. So Lemmy is a link aggregator. Think something like Reddit, where you can post links and have a conversation based around those. Um, Write As and Read As are full-out blogging platforms, where they're meant to be more long-form, 
more in-depth writing. Um, but again, because it federates, people can subscribe to your stuff when you put up a, a message. They will be notified of that. They can read that in their stream and they can comment on it if you have comments over it. Um, PeerTube is video hosting, sort of like a federated version of YouTube. So you can be on an instance. I can subscribe to someone else's stream and you'll be notified of those as well. Funk Whale, this is another one I don't know that much about, unfortunately, is audio hosting. Uh, so think of the analogy to that is Groove Shark. A lot of these names are, you know, sort of analogous to their other things. But again, you could subscribe to someone's feed, see when they post up an audio uh, feed, click on it and listen, and comment back if you like. And then there are two. Now, I'll note that neither of these right at this moment are federated via activity pub to the rest of the Fediverse. Mobilizon is going to be, Get Together Community has talked about it. I don't know if they're actually going to do it, though. So, Mobilizon is done by a company called Framasoft in France, which they have an interesting model. They're a company in France. They put up Kickstarter-type, you know, crowdfunding, uh, crowdfunding events for the software, and if they hit certain goals, they put the developer resources in, create the software, release it as free software, and it's available to the community. So that's what they were actually the people behind PeerTube. Um, they actually wrote the PeerTube software, and they have another one going to add new features to it. But uh, they released the software, and there are lots of PeerTube so you know, ser uh, servers out there. I joined onto one, and I'm going to show that in the process of, of doing the demo. Um, but this is uh, event planning software. So think, think something like uh, Facebook groups or Facebook events, where you can set up an event, you can invite people to it and do all of the event planning stuff through that. Uh, GetTogether.community is another one. Now, I initially thought they were going to be part of the Fediverse because they said they're going to federate. But as it turns out, their initial idea of that was they're just going to federate with each other. So if there are lots of Get Together community servers out there, you can share events between them and you can subscribe to stuff between them, but it's not necessarily going to be part of the uh, greater Fediverse. I don't know. I don't know if that's going to go anywhere. It'd be really nice if you could just use your Mastodon account to uh, RSVP to an event, but I don't know if that's happening. So we'll see. Any questions about any of those so far? I've been really good with questions I don't know the answers to so far in this talk, so any more of those? Uh, I don't have a question for you, Murph, but I do have a um, comment for you. This seems like it takes, um, it, it almost seems like it takes, uh, it takes the uh, best parts of uh, Reddit and Discord. Well, remember, we're talking about a bunch of different services. Right, so I, yeah. I, I haven't, see, I don't have a Discord account yet. Yeah. I keep, I, there's different groups and they're trying to drag me in and I haven't done it yet. What's the appeal? I thought that was mostly a voice service. Is there also like a like a message board back end to it or something? Yeah, there's a, definitely a message board aspect to it, but like uh, kind of kind of in the same way that Reddit does it, you can like add um, uh, the uh, host of a Discord can uh, add certain uh, subcategories to that right. Discord. Um, so it creates this, like, it, it makes it a little bit more, uh, open-ended, like, makes it so that people can basically, uh, shape their own, uh, Discord server to fit the, uh, the content that, yeah, that Discord, uh, server is, uh, geared towards. Yeah. I, I've resisted getting into Discord because it kind of kills me because a lot of open source projects get on Discord and Discord isn't open source. Like you're you're jumping into again yet another silo. Like, oh, leave Google Plus and go to Discord. Why are we jumping into to another silo? Another thing that nobody has, you know, the users have no control over again. But that's yeah. but like I said, I might get dragged in because there's certain yeah, groups that I might might have to. Oh, sorry. And the, the problem with Google Plus is that they, they show it like Google is notorious for scanning up services that are thrown away. Like it's you know it's, there's no continuity. 
Oh, absolutely, and that's why I'm resisting Discord, because I've just been burned with that. You know, we've all been, you know, down some of these, you know, everybody's been down the backup road. When do you start really doing good backups? Yeah, after you lose all your stuff because you didn't do backups. That's usually the event that does it for people. Like right. end users, like not the corporate part, but obviously there's a different mindset. But, uh, yeah, uh, there were a lot of good communities on Google+, Plus. a lot of them that had migrated from Identica. This was one of the things, I'm like, oh, look, you know, all these interesting people that are following on Identica have gone to Google+, Plus, and it's a nice, rich environment, and they handle photos really well, and it was, wow, it's great, until they killed it. Yeah. And then it goes away. You know, with all of these, uh, your instance could get killed. I mean, there have been instances that, like, someone said, look, this is too much work for me, I can't keep it going. But then you can migrate with your stuff and your users to another instance, and you can keep all the good stuff you want. So if any one entity decides, hey, I'm done with this, I'm giving up, I'm not doing this anymore, it doesn't mean you have to stop using it. You can move your stuff somewhere else. Where, And that's a flaw with Discord. Is That's what I say. I say, have we not already gone down this road? <laughs> you know, People jumped off of Google Plus to Discord and to Miwi and to some other things, and it's like, hey, let's jump out of this bad thing and into another thing that's just like it, except they say you're not, you know, just like Google said it wasn't when they did it for us. So. Since you brought it up, um, that yeah, carrying that email analogy further, does that mean that if I move from Mastodon Server A to Mastodon Server B, my email would change? Yes, it would. Okay. But yeah. it's the concept of, like, like personally, I'm not sure if my employees are going to come up on like that, but uh, is there a concept, like right now with email, right? I've had a domain for the last 20, 20, 25 years, whatever. So my email technically, when I moved from, you know, ISP to ISP, uh, my, my email hasn't changed. Does right. that concept exist in the Mastodon Fed first thing? That concept has been talked about. Mm -hmm but has not yet been implemented. So right now, if you move from one instance, from one master to another, your name would change. Now, the real proof of that, if you say, look, I don't like change, I want my name to stay forever. What you could do is run your own instance on your domain, and then you own it forever. Yeah, well, yeah, my, my setup, you know, if that analogy is uh, you run your own name server, or sorry, not name server, excuse me, uh, email server, which I don't know about anybody else here, but that's, I have zero interest in doing that. I'm capable of doing it, but all the quagmire that's attached with email, not to go over that corner, is, is ah, that the thing. I'm well, going to keep it with that in a couple of slides. If you set up your own, don't you get some some freebies, if you will? Because if you log into a site, uh, so a Mastodon site that's fairly popular, you see everybody else because somebody else is interested in some of the service that I am a Mastodon server on myself, I have to go make those introductions myself. Yes, yes. you do. Yes, uh, you could, there are things called relays you can set up. So you can say, hey, I'm running my own service, but I really like uh, what's going on on Fostodon, because uh, you've seen like my feed, and you say, hey, it looks like there's interesting people over there. I think you can set up a relay on Fostodon or a relay on your server. I don't know. I don't run my own, so I don't know exactly how it works. But you can set up a relay so you can pick up their local feed and dump that into your either local food or federated feed or something like that. So there are ways to expand your world. So that's interesting. So you could you could primary you could relay the one that you find interesting. If it goes away for some reason or they they change the way and you don't really like it, you could move. You could point. You could associate more with another one, Fostodon too. And right. you go, your name didn't change, and you have to do a right. little bit more work. Oh, oh, right. and, and, and remember, say, say you start out on, on Mastodon.social and you want to run your own. You can migrate your followers and your feed over to your own instance. So then on your own instance, you would still see everything you were seeing before. You would see all of the people, your local feed, like I said, I'm going to get into that in, in a couple of minutes. But your local feed would change, would be much more sparse, because there aren't anybody, there isn't anybody else on your server. I'm going to get to that in a minute. I think both of those points you brought up, the persistent, or running your own server, and the other point, I think we're going to largely answer in upcoming slides. So after okay. some of these, I think we're going to get to those. If, if that doesn't answer them, though, I'll do my best to answer it afterwards. Okay. So, so let me take a look. I went through all of these. And I'm going to demonstrate 
a bunch of these live when we're doing it, because live demos always go perfect. Um, so, oh, look at this, the very next slide is part of this. So here's how you could, these, these are three of the ways, and I think these are the only three ways that you can do this. Uh, so you can join an instance. So you're joining an existing instance that allows for open registration. So there are a few ways you can find these instances. You can go to joinmastodon.org, and they have a bunch listed, and you can pick, you know, based on what language it is, uh, what their interests are, what their moderation policies are, there's information on all of those. Fediverse.party is a big site that has a lot of stuff about lots of things on the Fediverse. So that's an interesting place to take a look to before you pick some. So that's joining an existing instance. And like I said, I'd recommend against joining Mastodon.social because it's so huge that you get, it's almost a silo unto itself. You're, you're removing some of the strength of the Fediverse by joining such a large instance. Um, but take a look. You know, it may suit you. Um, you can create your own instance. Now you can create it on a bare metal server that you have on that you have on the internet. Uh, maybe you already have an existing web server. You could run it on that. Uh, you could put it in a VPS. So, you know, a DigitalOcean droplet or a Linode node or wherever you get your stuff. Or you could run it in a container. There are actually full sets of instructions with a container on how to set that up for yourself. So you can run your own and be an island unto yourself. And again, run that on your own domain so that your name theoretically never has to change. You could decide to go the other way, though. Uh, by the way, if you're running your own and you get fed up with it and you migrate to another thing, you would then lose that unique name. I mean, obviously, you won't lose. No one will be able to take your name because it's your domain. But people wouldn't be able to address you on it. They would have to address you on it. There's also a hosted Mastodon. So this is somewhere in between those two. And this may answer your question. You can go to, there's a site called masto.host. I think other places do it too, but I'm not 100% sure. This was the most popular one that I found that does this. Um, they basically, they're like a, like a WordPress type of thing for the Fediverse. You want to run Mastodon, but you don't want to be the system administrator on it. You just want to be the instance administrator. You jump in. You you know you got to give them some money. I believe it's six euros. But they maintain everything. They maintain your operating system. They maintain your latest version of the Mastodon software. And you just do your users and you know you just do the end user part of running the instance. So so there's your three ways to do it. Let somebody else do everything. Let somebody else run the lower end stuff and you just manage your instance however you see fit or do your own but then you're responsible for everything you know if you leave your uh, database with default credentials and get owned yep you're on your own with that one with masto.host they are doing that back end stuff so, so with, can, the, with the run your own instance what kind of liability issues are you i guess people join if you get somebody mm -hmm. crazy or, oh well that's that's if you open registrations. You could have an instance and only allow people in that you choose. You know, just because you start running this doesn't mean that you have declared yourself the next Twitter and you're letting everybody in the world in. You can selectively, you know, give out invitations. You can allow your users to give out invitations and tell them, look, if you give out, you know, an invitation to an idiot and they screw things up for everybody, I'm coming after you. <laughs> you know, you can, you can moderate that however you like. Um, I have some pocket more like, is there any legality or, or, or liability issues if you, um, if, you go, moderate, moderate. if you go on a site called Tector and read all the stuff on Section 230 that's it, what liability there is is an interesting problem, and uh, it's the same as you would with any comment on any website, though. Like, how responsible are you for the comments in your WordPress blog? It's about the same level. So theoretically, Section 230 of the Copyright Act should protect you from everything your users say. You know, the liability should be on them. Of course, that's under constant attack, particularly right now. So that might be an issue in the near future. So I can't give you a very clear, definitive answer on that. You should not be responsible for your users' actions. Your users should be responsible for it. How that will pan out in the near future is a very interesting question. And then if you set up your own instance, is throttling available with figures so that you don't get overwhelmed, mm -hmm. they don't take your server, blow out your networking capability or anything? 
Um, I'm not running my own instance, so I can't for sure, say for sure, but I'm sure from the web, I mean, it's running on a website. It's running on Nginx or on Apache. So now that I think about it, of course, because you would use the same, you know, same restrictions on those as you would with any other website. You can set up traffic shaping and all that stuff. And yeah, yeah, it's all running on another, it's all running on a website back end. So whatever you're, whatever you've used for your back end, be it Nginx or Apache or whatever else it's running on, that's where you would do that. So I know there's been other like things similar. There was Freenet, which is more like a protocol above the internet that everybody can set up their own server and share information, or you know, all, all these different capabilities. But they they're just inherently slow, right? It's 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 the lack of resources or the lack of capabilities. This, this I don't think you'll find that issue. It's really interoperating websites, so it's not like. You know, it, say somebody decided, see, uh, Freenet was somewhat distributed, was distributed in a different way. If yeah. someone said, hey, I'm going to upload four terabytes of stuff to my instance, you would kill that instance, maybe, you know, unless they have throttling. You know, say, say you go to upload four terabytes to an instance that has no limits on that, and their internet connection gets completely saturated and becomes useless. That's only for those users. Everybody else would be fine. Of course, except for people trying to connect to that instance. They would say, hey, look, I can't get timely updates from that. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't cut you off too early. Did you? I got all excited. No, 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 no. This is good. This is good. I, I do that sometimes. I apologize. Okay. So, we covered hosting. So, requirements. Okay, this, this slide is very fuzzy. Put this in a very fuzzy light. I tried to do some research on it. I had a hard time finding hard answers. Uh, some people were saying 2,900 users on a Docker instance with two 1.8 gigahertz processors, and that was okay. Other people said 1,800 users running on bare metal, not in a container, two 4 by uh, 3.5 gigahertz processors, and that was okay. But there's no performance stats or anything. So the answer is, it depends. And as far as how much it costs per month, some people were saying 5 to 12, some people were saying 10 to 20. I think this is another big, it depends. Uh, depends upon how active your users are, how much media they upload, uh, how much posting they do. I, I think there's just a lot of variables. So don't consider there, the answers canonical in any way. Are there AMI images for like Amazon or something for the browser like that you just put these bit up? I don't recall seeing that. Like I say, there are, contain there are straight up containers like Docker containers. So if you can do that in there, yeah, you, you should be good. I don't know if there are specific ones, but then I haven't looked either. So so there may be. There may be. Okay. So here's a little, and I want to show something. I'm going to skip this slide for a minute. I'm going to go to the next slide. No, I meant to switch the two of these, but I forgot. Um, so here's a look at the default Mastodon view. So since nobody's used TweetDeck, this won't look familiar to anybody. So... Here's what, and once you set up an account on Mastodon Instance, you will see something similar to this. So, the, the first pane is where you put your stuff, okay, where you would type your message. And the next pane is the home view. The home view is everyone that you have subscribed to, and nothing else. Well, who you've subscribed to and who those people might boost as well. You know, who, who they might boost. Okay, and I'm going to get into, so what's the... What are the two hardest things, oh, I'm sorry, what are the three hardest things in computer science? Right? Off by one errors, I and naming two. project. What's that? I think it's two, but yeah. Yeah, off by one errors and naming projects. Those are the two. So, Mastodon has a nice, uh, and it was actually named after the metal band, not after the animal, but of course the animal followed and is in a lot of the logos and stuff. So, uh, Mastodon, where you would have a tweet, in Mastodon you have a toot. Okay? Nobody giggling uncontrollably. Good. We're more mature than the greater vetiverse. Um, yeah, you know what? I never called the bodily function that either, so that didn't even occur to me. Apparently, that's you know, a thing, so some people giggle uncontrollably at tweet. They should, they should name it something serious and respectable like tweets. Okay, whatever. Uh, you know, it's like the president tweeted this. All of a sudden, that's normal discourse, but anything else is weird. Okay. 
the world we live in. And if you can imagine an elephant, so if you take, instead of retweeting on Mastodon and Paul the Booth, if you can imagine an elephant lifting someone up with their thumb. Uh, so what you will see in your home feed is people that have posted messages that you follow directly and things that the people you follow directly have boosted. That's what you'll see in your home. In the local timeline, you will see only messages from people in your, on your server. So this is a view from Fostadon.org. I cut off the top of it, but I'm going to show it again later. So this is so the people in the local timeline are all people that are on my instance. And if you'll notice, so if you look at the if you look at the addresses, if you see here, it's at sir at compwin dot, and it's abbreviated because there's no room. But you can see the full addresses there. If you look on the local timeline, they only have the name, only the nickname, because it's implied that everybody that's in a local timeline is on your server. So you don't have to put what server they're on. They're only the people on your local server. The federated timeline is an amalgam of everyone. Of course, it will have everything. Of course, you're, you're, it'll have everything that's in the local timeline and in your timeline because all of those also have happened out on the Fediverse. It will also show posts from anyone that has been subscribed to or searched or from your instance. And I'm going to flip back. Oh, and over here, I clicked on an account, and it shows more information. This is the, uh, the profile page of that particular account. So I clicked on that. Normally, you would see just these three, just the, th well, these four, I guess. Your, your posting page, the home, local, federated timelines. I clicked on an account. So it pulled open another page to show me that account profile page. So that's what a profile page is. So let me go back to the previous slide because it's going to explain how things end up in these different timelines a little better than I did. And this person put this in the public domain, but I'm crediting them anyway on the slide because uh, I put the credit in before I knew what license it was. I actually asked them. I said, can I please share this? It's really well done. And what license? And they said public domain. I'm like, okay. I didn't have to credit you, but I already did it. So I'll leave it. So this shows what makes up each Mastodon timeline. And I don't like reading off the slides, but I can't help with There's a lot on here. So if you get a public tube by any account, if you're following that account, that tube shows up in your home timeline. If you're not following that account, if who is on your instance, it shows up in your local timeline. If, oh, by the way, if you were following them and they're on your instance, it will show up in both and probably show up in the federated as well. So sometimes you'll, or if you post something, it might show up in all three of them. So sometimes you'll see certain posts show up in all three timelines. So if who is not on your instance, if someone on your instance follows who, they'll show up in the federated timeline. If someone on your instance, this is where it gets complicated. If someone on your instance boosts who's to or searched for it with its URL, it would also show up in the federated timeline. This is where I got it. Like I say, the federated timelines, a lot of stuff from a lot of other servers. This sort of determines what that should be. This that last step is a little fuzzy too. So if none of these things are true, you might never see that too. So and a lot of people turn the federated timeline off. They say like I don't want to see all that other garbage. I only want to see stuff from my my timeline and maybe stuff from my server or maybe just my timeline. There's a simplified timeline, which looks sort of like Twitter, where it's just people you follow. You can, of course, change these things to do whatever you want. So, does that make sense? I can't imagine there are no questions about this. Okay, so question on this. So, the one that shows up in my home timeline is anyone I'm following, regardless of where they're at, so they don't have to be on my local server, correct? Right? Absolutely. And of course, that's what you want. You want to follow people from all over. You don't want to only see, oh, I mean, maybe you do. I can't tell you what you want. But most people want to view stuff from all over the place. So as you see interesting stuff go by, either on people you follow or people in your instance boost somebody and say, hey, there's somebody on another interest, in, instance that looks interesting, you can then follow them. And then they will always show up in your home timeline. And then the local timeline looks like something that would be useful for moderation if you're moderating your own server. Or you right. the activity on your own server. Well, and also if you if you're on an instance, like if you pick your instance carefully, like if you get on Mastodon.social, the 
local timeline probably looks like the, the, the Twitter you know, fire hose, where there's like all kinds of stuff from a zillion different people that you don't know that maybe you have no connection or interest in. When I got on phosphodon.org, you know, it's an instance, you know, with a primary focus on free and open source software interests. So most of the people that have signed up have that kind of bent. So the local timeline has lots of interesting stuff in it for me. Now, if you got on, there are some that are focused around art. There are some that are focused around journalism. If you pick an instance that the basic, uh, you know, constituency interests you, you should probably see interesting stuff in your local timeline. And again, if you want to see everything in the world, you know, if you get an account on Mastodon.social, you are going to see a giant fire hose of information. You know, this instance only has about, it's under 10,000 users. I know when I started, it had about 3,000 users. So the local timeline is not overwhelming. I can scroll through maybe six or eight screens overnight and get everything that's happened on this instance overnight. And there's interesting stuff in there. Sometimes I pick it up, sometimes I don't. I also have a tendency, oddly, and this is just a personal choice, I don't follow a lot of people from my local instance, even if they're interesting, because they show up in my local timeline anyway. So there's two different ways I can do that. They are not filling up my home timeline. My home timeline is mostly people from other services, but that's just the way I set it up. You know, if you're on an instance that there's a lot of people on it and the local timeline churns very quickly, you would probably subscribe to people in your local timeline you find interesting. But since my local timeline isn't overwhelming at this point, that's one of the ways I separate stuff out. Like, I don't think I follow Nathan, even though he does a lot of interesting stuff, because I can see his stuff in my local timeline. It's a little bit of filter, but I get to. So, and this is Mastodon. I've already gone through all the sections of it, so I've given it, you know, quite a lot of quite a lot of explanation already here. And I'm going to do live demos of a lot of these later, so I can poke around and answer more questions. So when you say follow people, can you also follow a server? Like, is there? No, a, I, don't, I don't think you can follow a server. You can follow groups. You know, that's an excellent question. Yeah, I don't think I don't think you can. Though. Slightly less, uh, what's the word uh, exact? Like, you know, like again, free software. Like, I'm on, oddly enough, I'm on the SDF server. That's that's where my message. Oh, okay. Is. Uh, but you know, I was wondering if there's a way you could point on one because I I've been interested. In, I have free software, for instance, and just you know, just in general, I like I like to hear more noise from that server kind of thing. I didn't know if that concept exists. I didn't find it, but I have to admit I did not painstakingly search for it either. So I. You know, you know what? That's a really your answer. <laughs> yeah, that's a really interesting idea, and both of us respectively should look into that. <laughs> Because I'm going to look into it. I, I, I take in, you know I take notes of stuff that's interesting to follow up on. I'm going to follow up on that because it would be neat to say if you're on SDF, pull the you know the Fostodon feed in in some way. I don't, you know what the right way to do that would probably because there are things like groups and lists. The right way to do that would be to say automatically put lots of people from Fostodon in this group for me, and then you could follow that group. That seems like that would be a likely because. I don't know if you, like, say, you say, hey, I want Mastodon.social's thing. Boom. All of a sudden, your home timeline is going to be lost. You'll never see anything from people you follow again. So I can see why they might not have implemented that, because it would be fraught with danger to some degree. But maybe if you do that as a group, and then in, in the group, you could remove people. You can say, okay, I want Fostodon, but these people annoy me, and you can boom, 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 knock them out of your Fostodon group. But it might be the other way around. It might be opt-in. You might have to look at Fostodon, follow a bunch of people, and then as they reply to people, add more people in. That might be the way to do it. Yeah. So, yeah, you're, look, you're, you're more, right. I, totally get, I totally get how that's not a social would be terrible for that because that. But I have to admit, most of the other ones, like each server, kind of has its flavor or its, its interest. Yeah. Or it's sick, you know, if there's such a thing anymore. Yeah, and just so you know, when I was looking to join it, I, I was on an instance that was more on the free speechy side, and I was getting shut out of a lot of stuff. So when I was looking for another instance to join, I was looking between Fostodon and SDF, actually. Mm -hmm. So those those were my two that I was looking at. Yeah, I've been on SDF for 25 years or so. It's, it's yeah, I've only been on for a couple of years, so... You know. Well, I mean, they, they were a public access Unix system for a long time. No, I know. That's what I mean. I have a shell account on there that I, I paid. I forget what it was, the ARPA level, where you sent some money. And, yeah, $36. Yeah. Yeah, you got yeah, it. That was, I, I sent that to them, and I have an account now. 
for you for two week. So, so I'm very familiar with SDF, and I'm sure that, that that's why you perked up when I had SDF as my uh, as my example profile on here. Okay. So, so let's get over to another. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, how would you characterize like the content of the service? Because looking at the examples you have, this feels like a real libertarian bent where they're, you know, yeah, and I agree with them, like, you know, privacy over the government intrusiveness into like your your content or things like that. Is this, is that more the feel you get when you're on the metaverse or there is a wide spectrum. Okay. Okay. If you get on certain instances, you would be absolutely convinced that everybody on the Fediverse is a communist, not a leftist. Like an outright communist. <laughs> and maybe some anarchists in there. So it very, very, very much depends upon what instance you're on and who you follow. You know, it's like, I, 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 I'm very torn on some of that. It's not to get too political on things. Um, I like the free speech aspects. But then there are some people with some truly distasteful views. And what do you do about that? And the instance I was on in the past was related to a podcast that I listened to, and the tone of that instance really changed, and it went a little, little too right for me, and so I was very happy that I have my main, you know, my Fostodon.org account, which they're not, you know, they're not way on the left or anything, you know, they're not way out there, but they do some rational moderation stuff that keeps the feeds more to my liking, and that's what you go for, you know, and if you know, someone might look at my feed. Were you getting that from what you see on the screen for me, or were you getting that from looking at other instances? No, I was just looking at, like, the Privacy Foundation that we had as an example here. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's and that's and that's that's that. to, you know, weaken encryption, which is, you know, I totally agree with. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so you'll you'll see, and, and my feeds tend to, tend to lean that way, but like I say, if you go on other instances... Believe me, no matter what political stripe you are, you can find an instance to suit your needs. Trust me on that. And I, mean, I actually, I actually, in some ways, prefer this. That I, I disagree with this, you know, cancel culture. Or, you know, this, this, this. Uh, I don't know the, the, the censoring of information. But I think that if you don't like what somebody's saying, don't listen to them. Like you don't yeah. have to, you know. Yeah, but sometimes it can be overwhelming if you look at something. You know, there are some really sort of extreme free speech kinds of things, and it's like, you know, I don't want to see that. I don't even want to come across that. You know, Foster Don doesn't, I don't see now this is what suits my needs. I don't feel they over-moderate, but I don't feel they under-moderate. You know, the other instance I'm on, I see stuff like, really, you didn't feel like you should put a lid on that? You know, and like I said, I'm trying not to be specific. Um... Can you mute individuals? So if you're on a server where you like most of the content, that you're oh yes, absolutely. Yeah, so so you can and, and you can block servers yourself too. You can say, look, okay, this server, like people keep creating accounts, and I can't. Okay, you know what? I don't want to see anything from this server. There are a lot of moderation things you can do from your own. End. And like I say, if you could never find anybody that moderates the way you like, then spin up your own instance, and then you can either leave it wide open to everybody. You can block selectively whoever you want. Do that however you like. So let's look at some other services, and I'll swing back and, like I say, I'll show you my Mastodon account, which is, of course, it's a, it's something where you see stuff other people post. So that's always fraught with danger, but I'm going to do it anyway, and we'll take a look at that, and uh, you can see some of the controls as well. So PixelFed, and this picture does this no justice, sadly. Um, you can see an array of pictures, and because it's on my feed, they're all bicycle pictures. Okay. Sorry. I, I follow a lot of people that ride bikes on there, and that's where I post a lot of my cycling pictures. So that's what you get. Uh, the car pictures are down below somewhere. Um, but it's a... This is probably the best one that I use that's integrated in with the rest of it. People can follow my pixel-fed feed if they like, and then they can comment on my images from Mastodon accounts. It's really cool. To that one. This is probably the best demonstration of federation that I have. Um, PeerTube, if you look, looks a lot like YouTube, right? So this is a, one of the Mastodon sites called LinuxRocks.online set up a PeerTube instance. And when I needed a place to put some of my uh, videos from other presentations I've done, I put them on LinuxRocks.online. So I have an account there, and uh, I can... Display videos. This place has given me a five gig limit, I think, which has been plenty for my needs, and uh, lots of interesting stuff on there. 
what Bill is on is that uh, event planning service. And I'm going to show that as well. You can see my image formatting uh, capabilities leave something to be desired. I should have picked a better background image because we got like the middle third of Tux. So no face and no feet, no nothing. Uh, sorry. You know, I set this up in like five minutes. And uh, so this is the event for our, this is the notice for our event here. Uh, I subscribe to it. Oh, I think it doesn't show. Uh, you know what? I'll show this live. It says no one is going to this event. I actually signed up with my email address just so something would be on there. Um, but I'll show this later. So this one's a little plain, but again, I did this really fast. So you can do more with it. Um, so, get close to the end here. The Fediverse is a way to use the web in a more individual way, sort of like the way the web was supposed to be before it was just, you know, four websites with screenshots of the other four in it, which seems to be what everything has devolved into, to steal something from Cory Docker on there. Um, and he stole it from someone else. Um, so, the, so it's a way to use the web in a more individual way. You can choose an instance with a community that suits your needs, run your own server, and not be a second-class citizen like the way email is kind of devolved into. You run your own email service, but boy, do you have to jump through hoops to, to get Google or uh, Microsoft to accept your emails if you're on your own. Um, and you can make, you can tailor your experience to be what you want it to be. Uh, it avoids the advertising algorithms and other stuff that the other social networks seem to have made things miserable with. Um, and the other thing is, something to keep an eye on, though, is, is there anything stopping Facebook from doing mastodon.facebook.com and jumping into the Fediverse and then applying their algorithms to their local users? No. This could happen. Um, so you just have to keep an eye on what's going on or somebody come up with another service to make things more visible. No, but if you are not on that instance, you can, of course, tailor things to avoid them or block part of them or, you know, do what you need to. What else do I have here? Oh, this is for Mauricio, which shot me a message saying he's watching. He might be watching on YouTube or something. Um, this is a bunch of resources that you can find more information on the Fediverse um, from these links here. Uh, Fediverse.party and Phineas gives some nice general information. We distribute, which I hadn't looked at until I got this slide, uh, gives some news about new things that are happening with different services and what's happening with some of the existing services. Um, I had the joinmastodon.org site for joining a, an instance. He has Fediverse.party, blah, blah, blah. There's links here. Um, oh, I'll give you my GitHub. All of these slides are available. I have them up on my GitHub page, which I keep dumping stuff on. I don't use properly. Uh, but the stuff's all available there. Uh, so Fediverse.space and some of these other things let you visualize some of the stuff going on in the Fediverse. And there's some monitoring which show you a list of known servers, uh, how many people are on them, how many posts go out on some of these. Although the federation.info is listed twice, I hope that link is correct. But in any case, this will be on the web. Uh, this, this will be on the slides on the web. Uh, and if you look at one page I scroll with my scroller. Uh, so I'm happy to entertain any questions, and I'm going to demonstrate some of these sites too if you like. Uh, I'll show like a little bit about how Mastodon works and PixelFed, and uh, maybe we'll get into some of on and some of this stuff. And something really interesting is happening right now. There is an activity pub conference happening now. I'm interrupting right now. Um, so if you go to conf.activitypub.rocks, uh, it started yesterday. Uh, I was at work, and work kept me busy, so I did not have a chance to look at any of the talks yet. But the talks are going on right now uh, at the activity pub conference. I know Evan Petromo did a... Uh, did a pre-recorded talk, actually, I, I, I did look at part of his talk, uh, so I watched that, but he did a live Q&A yesterday on that talk, um, and there's stuff, Christopher Lever Weber is one of the uh, operatives running it, and uh, it should be interesting. I will probably be watching stuff afterwards. Um, so contact information for me, I showed before, I'm on Identica and slash Murph. Uh, you can see me on at Murph at Fostodon.org. If you just want to look at my timeline now without signing up, if you go to HTTPS called slash slash Fostodon.org slash at Murph, you can look at my profile page. I don't think it shows everything, unless you're on but it shows a good part of my profile page. 
And anyone can email me if you have questions outside of this, so you don't have to jump onto the Fediverse to contact me at member.fsf.org. And that's all I have for slides. I can go through a couple of the different services and uh, pull that up and show you if anybody's interested. Uh, and I'm welcome to more questions. Uh, John, did I answer your questions in the course of doing that on that next slide? Okay. Like I said, I said I'll probably get around to it, but whether I answer it correctly or not is different. So, yeah, actually, I, I short sheeted it because I think uh, he brought up about either the email analogy or going away or something. I, that was the thing in the back of my mind. My name changed basically in my email changed. Right. So but like I say, there are, there are different ways you can mitigate that. So one thing, thing, one thing that makes me really sad is just how much proprietary software there is in the federal government. Like how much of this stuff is locked away. You know, there's there's Microsoft Team servers is like the principal way DoD is doing work from home, and it's it's this hard to use, hard to share, hard to you know you know win content. You have to have access to that specific capability. You have to yeah. sign on for a Microsoft account, you know, and, and use their authenticator to make sure that you're correct. But, you know, it's just all this, like... You can use the regular TOTP authenticator if you jump through a bunch of hoops on your Microsoft account, by the way. How much? How many folks within the DoD are on these services that you've encountered? Like, what's the... I have never seen anyone identify themselves from the DoD on these servers. I cannot, however, answer how many people are on there because... Yeah. If they don't identify themselves, I don't know. So there's no specific communities that you found that are like focused on. No, nope. nope. I do want to show off though. I have my Mastodon shirt, so there's one of the Mastodon. <laughs> That's the only money I've given to Yugen was buying a T-shirt. So whatever money he gets kicked back, the nickel or whatever he gets from the T-shirt sale. And do they have um, regular conferences they, they host or anything like that? Yeah. I have not seen a Mastodon conference yet. I think there have been little sub-meetups at other conferences, but I haven't seen any specifically for that. So, let me pull up. Okay. Let me throw this over on this screen. Again. There's stuff from people all over the world on Mastodon, so putting this up is fraught with danger. But, so here is Mastodon. Let me shrink this down. Usually I'm on a, on a 4K screen, so I pump up the magnification a little bit. But I scaled this one down to 1080 so we'd have any hope of reading anything, you know, over the Internet. Is that readable enough from your end? Okay. So, so here's my home timeline. Oh, look at this. I scrolled down, so I'm missing out on all this stuff here. So, a lot of Christopher Lever, Lever, Lemmer Weber. That, uh, for some reason, I just can't say that. These syllables are just weird. Um, boosted one of the talks from the Activity Pub conference. Oh, and of course, it's the internet, so there are cats. It's Catterday, so cats will show up on my timeline. Um, you know, uh, Jan Wildebar is a uh, Red Hat evangelist. You know, I follow him. He does a lot of interesting stuff. So, code sections, follow the GNOME project, and Next Next Cloud. Uh, Voltaire is one of the guys from 2600. Uh, so there's lots of stuff in here. Uh, so the local timeline, you can see. So this is people. If you look in the lower left, you can see it's Fostonon.org. That's Code sections. So there's, these are all people that are local to my instance. And then the federated timeline. This is where the danger is, by the way. The federated timeline. Because you never know what you're going to see on there. Uh, you know, have I accidentally caught? On, see, there are what are called uh, content warnings. Ah, see, here we go. See, I'm not going to click on this. See how it says sensitive content? It says NSFW. And there's a lot of skin tones there. I'm not clicking on that in front of a general audience. That would be a bad idea. So you'll see there is some that goes in there. So somebody somebody on my instance is following this, this account because that's what's showing up out here. 
But there's lots of stuff. There's lots of foreign language stuff. There are bots. There are dogs. So, so this is where you find lots of other stuff that you don't follow. Make sense? Can you hide your federated timeline? Directory, favorites lists. Let me look at the settings here. Notifications, follows and followers. So you see these are people that I follow. Bob, can you hide your federated timeline if you want to in your dashboard yeah, view? Oh, absolutely. And I probably, that would have been a smart thing to do, but I did not do that. Um, so you can go in here. All of these are things that I've pinned. So what I can do is unpin that. Boom, it's gone. And what I can do, say I search for something. Say I search for, uh, hey, I search for activity pop. That'll do is this is everything that's hashtag with activity pub will be in this column. Now what I could do is say this weekend I want to see lots of activity pub stuff. I can pin that, and now every time I log in, until I get rid of that, I will have an activity pub column. I didn't mention all of these things are configurable. So you can get rid of your local timeline if you wanted. Say it's being overwhelming. You know, there are certain things like Every so often, and they shaken up so they haven't had one for a month or two. But they were doing a movie night. So basically, a streaming they had a streaming service that would show the movie, and they would do something like Hackers or Tron or like some some geek or cyberpunk or some bad movie. Then like Cube, Cube, Cube was a terrible movie. So you get on and you MST3K like echo the movie, and everybody's commenting on it. You put one hashtag. So the hashtag war was We Are Nameless from the Hackers movie. So if you follow that while the movie's running, you get a constant stream of the commentary everybody puts in from the movie. And it was a lot of fun. So hopefully they're going to kick that in again. Um, but that was one of the things that was a lot of fun on the, on the Federer. So see how many people are talking on it? If I do We Are Nameless and see how many Is that still? No, it's not a thing anymore. Okay. If you do that on the weekend that the movie is going, it's like, We Are Nameless, you know, 1,050 comments, and then the next thing is like four, you know, because lots of people are watching that particular thing. So, let me get back into the settings, because there are ways to block stuff. I haven't bothered doing that, though. Filters? No filters. Yeah, so you can export all of your stuff. Uh, you can set two-factor authentication, showing me instances. Oh, everybody in the world gets my IPs. Oh, that was bad. What happens if you go back to filters and click the add new filters? What options does it give you? You know, your keyword or phrase. Uh, this looks like you can filter on keywords. You can filter out an SFW if that's what you want to do. Um, this kind of be a way to block people. I know, so say you let me go back to the so say you want to block somebody. Oh, uh, see, I don't want to block anybody on my instance. Let me bring back, see, this is how quickly you can bring it back. You can bring it back temporarily with this. So if I wanted to, say I want to block this. Federated timeline moves fast, by the way. So I know over here, what I could do is I could block that user if I want. Oh, and there we go. So I could block the entire domain. Now this person is on Mastodon.social, so that'd be a that would cut a lot of traffic out of my feeds. But you could block the domain from there. Okay, so that's where that happens. Any other questions about that? Let me pull up. Here we go. I'm logged in on my account. So you can see these are photos. See today, not all bicycle pictures. So, activity pub comp, there will be some though. So, yeah. Angry alien. Yeah. Okay. So, you can see this is different pictures. And if you look at my profile on here, so pixelfed.social slash Murph, that's where you see a lot of motorcycles and bicycles and cars and that sort of thing. 
So that's your uh, Instagram type thing. And there are other interfaces. Actually, the guy that writes the software seems very obsessed with Instagram. So he's got like stories and he's got like different views and stuff. I haven't gotten into so much of that stuff. So you can customize your views a lot with that. But I'm trying to find one that somebody has commented on. This one. Oh, here we go. So Randy knows, is Randy Noseworthy, it's someone I know personally. He asked what kind of bike it is. This comment came in from the Fediverse. So this comment I put in because the PixelFed software said High Point was in the Carolinas. So I just put in a comment say, ah, it's High Point, New Jersey, not wherever it is in the Carolinas. He commented on my photo because he follows my photos and asked if it was a Triumph. And that came in from, so if you look, that's plastodon.org. Randy knows. So that's his account from another server. He commented on my picture, and it shows up here in the comments for this picture. I don't know if you find that interesting. This one seems to have some of the best integration. Questions, comments? Criticism of the framing on my photos? That I take too many pictures of bicycles leaning against things? Yeah. That's a lot of my pictures. Uh, so let's see. Did I do something smart like bookmark my page for the Mobilizon thing? I did not. That's in my email. So give me a second here. Don't need to put all of my email up here. That seems like not the best idea. So give me one second. Not that one. Not that one. There we go. One pro tip. I was unable to get those multiple uh, things up until you go into preferences and click on enable advanced web services or something like that. Then that allows me to have the multiple streams. Oh, well, you know what? That might be the way SDF default might default you to the simple interface instead of the advanced one. Ah, is that a, ser is that a server preference that they default for you? Uh, yeah, they probably yeah. defaulted that way for you, so it looks more like Twitter. If, they say, if that's how they say, you know, here's a messaging yeah. thing with what you should be familiar with, they might not give you that, that full view. That is a more recent development. I started with that more advanced view, so I liked it, so I never went to the simple view. So here's Mobilizon, and I'm logged in. So it's an interesting site, so you could pass this. See, I gave myself, I'm the only one showing up for this, and that's me, of course. Of course, I didn't advertise this anywhere either. I only advertised it to Mark, and he didn't sign up, but you know, that's, that's okay. Because um, I wanted one thing to see there. You know, I wanted someone to be in here, and then I said, well, I can just sign up for it. So I did. Uh, so you can see I put in a message. It uh, took my my apostrophe and made it a uh, Nancy character. That's awesome. Um, but it did show that I'm showing up. Um, and you can see it's a demonstration. Do not use it in any real way. That's one of the reasons I didn't advertise it, because they actually, when they started this beta, they used to wipe everything after 48 hours. And that 48-hour clock, you didn't know when it started. So I do something that it goes away in an hour. It's like, oh, so the clock started then. Okay, recreate the whole thing. So right now, there's still warning it's under beta. But it's, uh, you know, it's getting there. It's a, a pretty solid site. And you can see these events may interest you. They're all in France. So needless to say, there's a plague and they're on another continent. So I ain't going anywhere. That's interesting because this is one of their stretch goals that they got the money for was to do federation with uh, activity pop and they know how to do it because they're the ones who created peer to so that should be one of the features in there and i think that's going to be a very strong strong feature for that if i'm still logged in here i am so you can see my stuff centered around the new york area but uh 
there are a lot of this this is sort of their demo site for get together a lot of people put in events that don't really have anything world ringtones okay whatever um, but there are some teams that do stuff the New Jersey drone users group is actually run by the person that runs our local uh, lug so I told him about this so he put some of his stuff up here there's a New York Haskell users group uh, New York Amateur Computer Club is on there. They're actually a very long-running computer club, and they're putting their no notices up here as well. And uh, But right now, you do have to sign up for a Get Together community site to RSVP to these events. I'm hoping maybe they broaden that out a little bit, but as yet, they haven't. But you can see I've put up a decent number of events here. Uh, if I go back, yeah, seven members, 24 events. I've put a lot of the lug stuff on there. I put this event on here. So this is, now of course it's on my free software enthusiasts. We could of course do different graphics and stuff or what have you. Um, I really like this site and I put up announcements on it. And the only problem is that the thing that this lacks that Meetup has, there are other features, but the people aren't here yet. So it's a little tough to reach people. Like you can't put a notice up on here and expect a bazillion people to show up because it just doesn't have that visibility yet. But the software itself is pretty darn solid, and I like it a lot. Uh, so, so I find it interesting. Of course, I referred us back to the Meetup site so that people could sign up or get the information from there. So, what was the other one I wanted to show? Uh, go back to my slides. Oh, PeerTube. PeerTube was the other. So here we go. Let me go into my videos. You know what I can do? I can update this. I can make this public now. So now, do you guys see the video but not hear the audio? I can hear the audio just fine. Oh, you can, really? I wasn't sure yeah. if that would work. Okay. Sorry, minor experiment during the demo. So, and this would be very, very recursive if I let this run, because it would be me doing this with me also doing this at the same time. So, but I wanted to show that this is a new video that's been put up in my whole conference videos, and you guys have seen these, though, because I, I did these two demos for, for this group as well. Um, so, again, it's a... YouTube-like thing, it's federated. I believe if you, you can also subscribe to stuff from other PeerTube instances and you can comment on stuff from, so you can subscribe to someone's PeerTube feed from a Mastodon account and then get notified when videos are posted and comment on them afterwards. Questions? Comments? I'm not the best salesman of this stuff. I don't know what normal people do, so I don't know how to show this stuff off. So that's all the stuff I had to demo. Um, is so, we yeah, so Mark, how do you see this compared to the big, you know, social media companies? Is this a very small subset of folks, you know, is there, a, is there a perceived technical barrier to entry that prevents more people from joining stuff like this? I don't think there's a big technical barrier. I think there's a network effect. You know, why is everybody on Facebook? Because everybody's on Facebook. Uh, that's really the big thing. Oh, can I post site URLs in the comments? Sure. I will post some of these here. Uh, yeah, I think it's more network effect than anything. Uh, that, that's, and that's tough to overcome. You know, why aren't people using something other than Meetup? Because uh, everybody's on Meetup. <laughs> this is for this event, so I'll leave this event thing in here. Murph, it's kind of like how um, the uh, IRS is still running... Uh, or still using COBOL. 
Well, you know, that I see that I see is a different issue because if Cobalt works and it can do what it's supposed to do, right. you don't be replacing it just to replace it. That right. doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Uh, you replace it when the alternative is better and does what you need it to do better. Oh, okay. You know, I mean, and that's just my opinion. But of course, I was an Amiga user up until about 2001. So my proclivities may not match up with what everybody else's are. Um, you know, people say, oh, you know, this is this is three years old. It's obsolete. It's like, well, no, yeah. it's obsolete if it doesn't do what it's supposed to. Yeah, um, no, you're right. Is it? Maybe it's more like, um, I don't know. It, it, it does feel like there are some of those um, types of uh, uh, tools out there that, like, uh, Maybe maybe the uh, public se- sector will still use, even though there are better alternatives out there. Yeah. Another way to look at it too, uh, the the federation part of these social media sites, like you know MySpace, is more or less dead. Although if you're banned, apparently there's still a, there's still a holdout for that. Or friends of mine will, that that do music tell me this. I'm not sure if that's true or not. But hey, I'm sorry, short. You have to make a commitment. You know, they're walled gardens. You're on MySpace or you're on Facebook. And, you know, and oh, you can be on both, obviously, but the, the people can't talk to each other. This this solves that problem, which is kind of nice. And also, to the technical barrier of entry question, it's kind of both. You can either a if you're if you're so inclined, you can set up a family. You know, that's not a caveat. If you're the technical nerd of your family, the tech support app. You set up one, you can do your family to use everything else, and if you federate it, you know, the other people, your aunt and uncle that are can barely figure out Facebook can still use it. So it's kind of a smooth world to it, in a way. Right, and a nice way to handle some of this is, you know, if you put stuff on something you own. Now, I don't own my Mastodon instance, but I feel like I have enough invested in it. And here's another thing. There's no advertising, there's no algorithms. You know what that also means to the site owners? No money. So I pay my site owners. I give them a, you know, I give them some money every year for towards operating costs. And Fostodon being what it is, if they get more than what they feel they need for operating costs, they sort of have a budget. They they keep about six months worth of runtime because they have an idea of how much it costs to run things. They take anything they get above that and they contribute it to different open source projects. So and that's one of the things I like about it. Right? We're taking the money we need and we're going to contribute the rest back to the stated purpose of this instance. So that's the way that can work. If you're on a different instance, you might want to consider, hey, this is a community I want to support, and you give them some money. You know, that's that, that's what I do. I have enough trust in the Fostadon guys. Like They seem to be in for the long haul. They seem to be doing things I like. They moderate it, you know, make a good experience. So, uh, you know, I throw them some money, because I know running that server doesn't cost nothing. I mean, they went from 3,000 users to something around 10,000 users. That's got to increase their costs. So, you know, I didn't give them more money, but I gave them, a, you know, what I felt the service was worth, you know. Are any of these groups self sustaining? Like, are they able to do that full time, or do they have real jobs on top of, you know, what they're. Well, I know, like, on my instance, which is a relatively small instance and it's more of a hobby thing, you know, it's nobody's full time job on there. I know Gargron is developing the stuff full time, he's got a Patreon and he gets enough money from that. And I believe he's paying some moderators. I don't know if that's full-time pay or part-time pay, but that's on the Mastodon and Social, the gigantic 500,000 user instance, um, which is a whole different class of you know, needing to moderate. Um, so I don't think a lot of people are doing this as a full-time thing. Again, you know, someone could, but uh, I, don't know. I don't know a good answer for that. Like, like I guess the donations are covering this, the hardware costs and power, or they actually taking some salary out. Uh, you know what? If they you know, if they said, hey, we want to take a, a certain amount per hour for the time we're putting in, I'd have, no, I'd have no beef with that. I would want them to be upfront about it. But, you know, they say, they, if, I'm assuming they're being upfront with what they say. If they say we keep our money for you know, costs and we donate the rest back to the community. And, you know, if they took a little bit off, I would prefer they be transparent about it. If they said, hey, we're taking... Uh, uh, you know, we're taking a certain amount out per hour, you know, to cover some of our things. I'd be fine with that. And if they were if they were rolling it in now, 
and not saying it, I wouldn't be as thrilled with that, but I wouldn't even wouldn't stop me from donating because I still want the service to continue. But if someone says I'm taking a couple of bucks for my time, then it's okay. Won't be stupid about it. I'm fine with that. Again, that depends upon your instance. Pick it up. Well, that's weird. Okay, I'm going to out somebody on this. Someone sent me a private message, but it doesn't say who it's from. That's interesting. If I click the reply, it's, oh, yeah, it is. Oh, sorry. Okay, so I didn't actually out anybody because I didn't say the name. So just so you know, if you get a private message in Jitsi, you don't see the name until you hit the reply button. That's why I was confused. I'm like, private message, but who do I reply to? If you hit the reply button, it shows you who the message is from. Interesting little note. Never got a private message in Jitsi. So, and uh, it's funny, I thought he was talking about the Matrix Protocol, but the Matrix Protocol does not go to Mastic. It does not go into Activity Pub at this point. It seems like they're very different kinds of messaging systems, so I haven't seen any bridge for that. Answer, I'm answering a question that nobody asked, by the way. But it occurred to me, anyway. So anything else? Any other question? Anything else you want to see? I can share my screen again and show you stuff. I'm actually talking closer to where people are, though, because now I moved this over to the screen where I was presenting from. Oh, it's been interesting, though. Like I said, I, I always, I always found the subject interesting. I've just never seen somebody do a deep dive, and like I said, some of the, the federation bits are a little confusing to me because I mentally want to just set up my own so that way my name never changes. That's the only reason. But would I be a? There's no other users going out and following other users. I have a lot of work to follow people. I'll look into that relay thing and dig into that a little deeper, though. Yeah, I don't know all the ins and outs of that. If you look into the Pleroma community, I think you see a lot more single user instances of that. So that may, one, it may be better software for you to run than Mastodon. And two, it, they, you may get more information on how to effectively broaden your network without individually following every person. So someone followed me while we were on here. Was it somebody here? Just out of curiosity. If you don't want to say it, that's fine. Yep, it was me. Oh, okay. Good. I'd like to get more users. It's, it's interesting, again, to have more reach to, to chat with people. So, so if anybody wants to follow me, feel free. Uh, I'll follow you back. Oh, I went to your page instead of thing. So, oh, that's why. I was following the outside link. So there's different ways you can follow. If you follow a link to somebody, you have to like put in your credentials so it does the whole follow back. But if you look on your own profile, since you followed me, I just have to go to my profile and click on your thing. I can follow you right away so I can do that. Yeah, that's what I was uh, experimenting with uh, a bit while you were you were demoing. I was just kind oh, okay. of on the other instances, and yeah, I found a couple people on like artalley.social and another one on like a game dev uh, you know type instance. Uh, yeah, yeah, it it, did, it it allowed with minimal friction, you know, to be able to follow. I, I did have to punch in my you know handle at mastodon.social. That just happened to be the instance that I registered with some years ago. Yeah, if you, if you registered years ago, it was much more common to jump on the, the main Mastodon.social site, but I try to tell people, like, it's gigantic now. Like, if you're already there and you're established, yeah, roll with it, do whatever you want. But for new users, I say, look around first. I mean, you may look around and say, no, I want to go where the most people are. Okay, Mastodon.social is the one for you. But now it's so big that I don't know if I would recommend it. Like I said, I wouldn't I you say that's where I want to be. I right, go for it. But I wouldn't just jump on it because it's the big thing. It's not Twitter. So to be on Mastodon, you don't have to be on Mastodon.social. 
I had mostly uh, forgotten about my Mastodon account until I saw this meetup pop up. <laughs> yeah, I'm finding, you know, I'm finding that I'm very happy that I've seen more of a community like Identica used to be back in 2008, 2009, 2010, as opposed to, you know, what things have turned into today, which seems like a mess. And Identica, there's always talk on and off with Identica adapting an activity pub and then rejoining the Fediverse, like creating a giant circle of Identica being back in. So that will be my other account if I do that, because I've had that for longer than it's existed on the Pump.io instance, which is what it is now. So, but Evan has said many times, he likes the pro he likes doing protocols, he likes designing the stuff, he thinks about this stuff. He does not want to run some giant instance, and he's still running Identica as small as it has dwindled down to these days. Um, so I think he would love for someone to volunteer to take it over, and if I were that sort of person, I would probably uh, do that. But I'm not. So, John, do, do you, did you say you had an account on SDF, uh, a Mastodon account? Yep, Unix oh, Queen, okay. Unix Sage at. Unix Sage? Yep. Okay. There's well, a lot well, of well, places out there. There's only one Unix Sage. That's, I've been using that name on public sites for a long time. Not nearly as cool as Murph, but it works. I'm, I'm always lucky when I get it, because I am not... Yes, you are. I'm, I'm the person in Murph. Hang that. Yeah, well, it's funny. Uh, you know... Mastodon has Unix Sage. Come up. Um, what? Murph? No, no, no. I'm looking at Unix, U N I X S A G E at sdf.org, and I don't see. No, no it's, uh, it's, it's at mastodon.sdf.org. Oh, okay. That's why. Uh, I mean, they're, 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 they're I, unless, I'm, unless I'm referring to it wrong, but their, their Mastodon server is actually, you know, mastodon.domain name, not just. At the domain name. I mean, my, no, I you. my username, my shell account's J Place, by the way. I've had that long enough that I could get that. <laughs> I got I got Murph on SDF, too. Somehow, after all those years, oh, do I have Murph? Do I have Murph and J? That's usually my alternate if I don't get Murph. Ah, I okay. So, no, I followed you on, uh, followed you on mine as well. So. Yeah. Yep, I see it. Cool. It's kind of part of the community. You bring people in that you know that have similar interests. So, I don't know if I have anything else. Uh, like I said, I'm just open to any other questions or comments or. Yeah, I happen to have it up because I was jealous of the way your screen looked and mine didn't look that way. I'm like, damn it! I'm a smart guy. Why doesn't this work that way? I mean, sometimes I feel I feel bad when you know web interfaces make an idiot out of me, and I am a quote unquote trained professional. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes I say, you know, if your user interface, if I'm having real serious problems with your user interface, there's probably something wrong with it. Because I've been using, you know, I did Amiga stuff, and I did Atari ST, and, you know, old system, you know, the, the, the old System 7 and System 8 Max, and CDE, and, like, I've adapted to just about every user interface that has shown up on, you know, any sort of end user. Like, if your thing is so opaque that I can't make it work, Maybe there's something, you know, unintuitive or wrong about it. I don't know. One checkbox and it solved my problem. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, there was some defaults there that maybe, maybe if I had signed on to other places, it was, it was there. I seem to remember I did have an instance running personally for a short period of time. I guess I do remember that running, but I just never chased it. But like I said, I signed on to SDF a while ago because there I took the same tack you did. I don't want to say I want to be in a great big pool, but I also didn't want to, you know, and there, like I said, I've been attached to that server for a long time, and, you know, generally speaking, they're that, nothing radical there. Technically, I guess it's all about art there, but I'm not an artist. Just, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's funny. I guess I have to modify my user interface stance, though, because a lot of the phone interfaces seem weird to me. Uh, it's tough. It's, some of the discoverability seems difficult. You know, you can't. It's like, there's an icon, and I'm not sure what it does, and the only way to find out what it does is to hit it, which is going to activate it. I can't hover over and get a hit. And no, is this going to archive this, or is it going to delete it? Yes. The icon is an That's arrow. Great. Right, what the hell does that mean in this context? But yeah, that, 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 that is definitely missing. To hover over to say, delete this. Oh, I don't want to do that. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to do something other than that. It's like, oh, this has been deleted. 
how do you undo? No button for that either. No, it's the, you know. But, uh, shake it. Old man shakes hand to clap. <laughs> that sort of thing. So, anything else? Anything that anyone want to see? Or thanks so much for the deep dive. That's uh, insightful. I appreciate that. Appreciate that. And if anybody wants to, if anybody has criticisms for me, either on the presentation or uh, my horrible borderline New York accent or whatever, please feel free to email me. Uh, I, you know, this is the first time I'm doing this in front of people. You know, I did the recording, and that was pretty much it. Uh, more than happy to hear any uh, reflections. I'd like to know what kind of audience this speaks to. You know, I sort of figure it's a semi it's a Linux group, so it's going to be semi technical. But I tried to keep it pretty simple. Uh, you know, am I assuming too much on the social media front or too little or, you know, anything you've got, please let me know so I can make this better and make it applicable to, you know, either either make it more specific to an audience or make it broader for a larger audience. You know, I sort of want to have, you know, be able to tune it if forward order request. Yeah, you know, this would be useful. I could present it. One thing further that would help me a little bit is to get my head wrapped around all the different entities within the uh, Fediverse, uh, knowing what is what. I know we looked at a number of things today, but yeah. trying to see what's referring to what, uh, what's relating to what, what's doing what, finding a way to get that information into a more digestible uh, actionable form would be something that might be helpful to help get more people into it because that might be a speed bump keeping some people out. So let me let me ask a counter question: What parts of that didn't make sense so that I can try to refine those bits or uh, you know try to reform those parts to make it? More, was it the list of the different categories of software? Was it the you know what part of it? What part of it? needs to be clarified. Well, part of, I didn't think about the software, but that might, uh, if I loaded Mastodon on my machine and I created a Mastodon and got tied into a Fediverse connected Mastodon instance, uh, what, uh, does that connect me to the pixel related services, or I guess it depends on how what federation connections your particular instance is connected to. So maybe how can I tell where, where I am in the map? Where am I in the constellation of all these things? Kind of knowing where you are uh, getting... I think, that, I think some of those links like Fediverse.party yeah. helps out. I can certainly look into that and maybe have an example slide or two for that. Yeah. But keep in mind to start with the Fediverse you don't have to necessarily load the software. In fact, I wouldn't recommend your first dip into the Fediverse being starting to set up your own Mastodon server. If you look at the instances and join an instance, that would probably, like, if you even if you're setting up your own instance, that should probably be step two at, at the server. Oh, I wasn't going there. I meant, uh, suppose I joined an instance. I started there. Right. And then when I said so software, I was thinking client side. To start off, you go to a site, you set up an account, and you're, you're working on their software, you know. So, yeah, I've had people ask them, oh, what software do I need? Well, you don't need anything to start. You start with a web browser. Now, there are clients for different things. There are clients for the phones. Oh, I didn't mention it. See, now that's something that would be good to mention. There are clients for the phones. Um, and, of course... So I can put an app on my... Uh, go to a Google Play Store and put it on my uh, Android phone. Yeah, there. Yeah. Well, none of them are... Well, I don't know if any of them are called Mastodon, per se. Um... There's one called, they're, they're all uh, large animal related though. There's one called Stegadon, which is a client for this. There's one called Tusky. Now there's one called Fedalab, which I don't know is available on the Play Store anymore. Google gave it much trouble, I can kick them off. Um, but that was a good client. So there are a number of clients to do that. I would probably start on the web page and maybe ask around for recommendations. Because um, those would be mine, would be either Tusky, Stegadon, or Fedalab. Uh, Fedalab is available on the F-Droid store. Uh, so if you are going down the more strict um, free software route, that is available on the F-Droid store. I think Tusky is as well. A lot of them are. Um, but, you know, if you're saying, hey, I'm on my uh, post-market OS machine and I have the F-Droid store loaded, uh, Fedalab is an excellent choice yeah. for that. 
and I would argue probably step zero is figure out which which community you want to you want to join with. If it's yeah. you're not on your own, because you know, like that's you said, that could be your your dot social example. I'm sure that's information by fire hose. So. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I would look at some of those links on the information page that Mauricio put together yeah. on my slides, which is on the GitHub. Um, and that will give you, some of those links will give you a look at what some of the instances are about, what might suit you better. I think uh, as the, the ability to do that kind of searching, to find an instance that you're in, in, interested in, um, uh, the maturity of that is making that easier to search and filter uh, would would be an advancement. I'm sure it's something as the, they are going to develop things, it will develop as time goes on. Yeah. Uh, to, yeah. to make it easier to search and find uh, where you one what you're looking for, find a community to join, and then from there find where you want to be linked within the Fediverse and uh, have some sort sort of self awareness as to where you are in the Fediverse. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot there. something that would tell you that. Yeah. Yeah, and it's not that linear either. So unfortunately, you know, I can't give you a map of all of the Fediverse. Uh, but I'm just saying that's where that's a speed bump that if it weren't there would be you know uh, less resistance getting involved. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm going to look into something there. like that and maybe follow up the uh, the different services with something like that. I need to dig into some of those links a little bit more, too. Those are just natural questions I was you know, sharing on you. And I welcome them. I'm, I'm jotting down notes, and, you know, you know, the next revision of this, I'll try to maybe clarify it. Because it was short, too. When I did the video, even after I lengthened it a little bit, it was like 27 minutes. So... I'm sure I can expand it out to a point, and then I'll cut out some of the chaff and you know get it down to better better information and shorter. Yeah. Also, also do something else uh, as about this is catching on that 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 tech. Another way to go about it is not only us you know joining something and saying finding the thing, but also too like if you have a special issues group you know that's not that that's not nerd related you know like I don't know bike riding to your point. And, hey, this is the Northern Virginia Bike Club. And, oh, by the way, we all join over here. We all hang out on this Mastodon site. And yeah. that could be the person, you know, the non-technical person to say, oh, this Mastodon, what's this? Oh, it's be a browser. Oh, it's just like Facebook. will be fine. Yeah. So that that could also trigger a little bit of growth. The other thing that I think that is that I find that I find difficult to do when explaining to somebody, yeah, and this is a marketing thing. You ever heard the the elevator pitch? And there's a there's a semi longer one. Basically, there's a thirty second pitch. Of, What's messed up? Well, here's what it is because you get involved in the explaining yeah. the seventeen layers of what it is. So there needs to be a good elevator pitch and a I forget what the mid, the, the, the the two minute or the under five minute pitch was, but there was always that. But elevator pitch is the thing I was always remembering, and I don't have a good one for that. And I've never seen yeah. one. Yeah, I always try to say you know it's like a, a network a lot of different networks that can communicate with each other and give you yeah I'm, I'm okay I'm ready. I agree with that differently a a, uh, a elevator pitch that you can explain to somebody that isn't necessarily th this audience here like yeah. somebody, a, a intelligent person probably a, definitely a computer user don't get me wrong but not necessarily not necessarily you know somebody that you know was like if you use the F word federated all of a sudden their eyes blaze over right so yeah that's well, that's why I try to... The network, the network, know, though, that, that helps. It's got something of a, you know, a Facebook or a Twitter feel, but the net, but the ability to go outside of that server, like email. Relating to something they're already familiar with. To bring those together, but I need to make it a little more cohesive, perhaps. Yeah. The, the email thing is definitely a good way to explain that. Yep. Yeah, because people do... People that, oh, no one understands federated networks. Oh, yes, they absolutely do. Because email is the federated network. You can email from your work email to your home email, or you can email somebody that's still using AOL, or you can email somebody on Outlook from your account. You don't have to be on Outlook to send an email to somebody on Outlook. So, except for the fact that Outlook is a program and a service, and that's complicated. But Yeah, I think there's there's only one thing worse than the open source crowd naming projects, and that would be Microsoft naming projects. But that's not let's just use the most common dictionary word and call all of our stuff that, and screw everybody else in the process. So yeah, okay. they're always they're always in the open source project of uh, you know uh, the uh, KDM, right? That's not hard to find on on you know the virtualization software, 
and yeah. you know, any Google search, all of a sudden you're looking to hook up monitors and keyboards. <laughs> yeah, you're looking at switches. Thanks, appreciate it. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so I think that's all I have on this. Thank you for the feedback. I will try to incorporate that and make the presentation better for the next bunch. Yeah, I, I sent it to a friend of mine who hasn't responded yet, and I said, you know, let me know what you think of this. And he said, what audience is it targeted for? I said, ooh, you know, this is why I don't do this for a living, I guess. I didn't even think about that before I made it. Someone good would have thought about that before they did the presentation. But I sort of had in the back of my head, this was initially done for this group. So fairly technical, good portion of do-it-yourself types. So I'm hoping that I targeted this right. If I were to go to a crowd of real newbies, it would probably have to be modified to back things off a little bit. You know, when I say, oh, host it your own on bare metal or VPS, that might not play in every audience. Like here, that's all good, and that was in the back of my head. Um, where in other contexts, that might be a little jargony for people to pick up. Well, I'm going to stop recording now. I think I've a lot. Uh, here we go. Stop recording.